Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News, our special Monday edition. And before we get into the news, we got eight wonderful stories for you guys from the gaming sphere, mostly related to Nintendo, with a hint of Google console news. I want to mention that we are currently giving away a Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate bundle. There is a gleam that I link down in the description for that. Been giving that away for a while. When we hit 50,000 subscribers, we'll finally announce the winners of that. We also have a second giveaway going on right now to celebrate our 100th episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. So be sure to go watch that episode of the podcast. We'll have that linked in the description as well. And uh, through that video, there's actually a link in the description of that video to the giveaway. You might be like, well, why don't you just link the giveaway here? Well, it's a podcast giveaway. So you probably should go check out an episode of the podcast, specifically the episode that announces the giveaway, to enter the giveaway, right? I mean, at least that's that makes sense to me. It is a podcast-related giveaway. Anyways, that being said, let's get right into the news. Our first story is about the Google GDC announcement coming tomorrow. We know they are doing a live stream at noon Central Standard Time tomorrow. We will be streaming it here at the channel, giving you some live reactions. I don't even know what to expect beyond some news on Project Stream. Well, they have some stuff set up at GDC. Um, in fact, it's almost an entire floor of a building at GDC. And uh, they have some interesting things set up, although obviously none of the stuff they haven't announced yet. So there are some cases out there that look like they could hold something like a video game console. Now, uh, they're not labeled yet, so I'm not sure that it actually is a placeholder for a video game console. It could just be for a controller or something of that nature, but they're pretty big display cases, which you typically see right after a video game console is announced. Now, a lot of people have been projecting that Google is just going to announce a streaming box or a streaming stick, but with a box that big, it looks like it could be potentially a traditional home console. So that's very, very interesting. We also got to see glimpses of what appears to be the logo for the system, and it doesn't really look like uh, anything in particular. You know, it's not like the, the G that you would expect from Google. It's kind of like a swiggly line. It might mean like a tornado type of thing, a vortex. No one really knows until the name's announced. It'll probably make sense once the name is announced. So I think this is very, very interesting stuff. And again, this just a reminder, tune in tomorrow for the full reveal of what Google's plans are to enter in to the video game space. Gearbox is at it again, specifically tweeting out a photo of Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition as some sort of tease for an announcement they are going to be doing at PAX East in about 10 days. And the thing is, is no one's really sure, like all their other announcements, if this is going to be a sequel or if this is just a tease for Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition potentially coming to Switch. Because like the tease they did earlier, where they had a blurred out image of what very clearly looked like Borderlands 2, the only system Borderlands 2 wasn't on was Nintendo Switch. Well, the only system that Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition isn't on is Switch. So, again, this, these could be multiple announcements for Switch. But we can't set aside the potential. We could be looking at a sequel, prequel, something like that as well. It's been a long time since we've seen anything Bulletstorm related. So, uh, I don't know. Gearbox is, is bringing the goods at least port-wise and potentially with new game announcements as well. Uh, almost like this might be their E3. They do have a panel, um, a little um, showcase themselves going on where they're going to be announcing all this stuff. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see uh, what comes of all these teases. I think they've teased five games so far, uh, two of which pertain, or at least potentially pertain to Nintendo Switch and Borderlands 2 and Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll find out next week. Nintendo is doing something interesting with Splatoon 2. Yeah, that 2017 game that is still going. Yeah, Wizards just won the Splatfest and all that. We don't do reporting like that in general. Congratulations, Wizards. I was uh, happy to contribute to some of those wins. Uh, that being said, uh, there is a demo landing for Splatoon 2 tomorrow. Right? A demo? A couple years later? What's up with this? Well, the, it's a one-week only demo, and you'll be able to play basically all of the online you know, modes, including... Uh, things like ranked matches and stuff like that. And you'll be able to play it against people who own the actual game. So you are basically playing Splatoon 2 free for a week. And now we know Splatoon 2 to play online requires a Nintendo Switch Online subscription. So what Nintendo is doing is anyone who downloads the demo is being emailed a free 7-day code for the Nintendo Switch Online service. And this code can be used even if you already used your prior seven-day 
trial from the Nintendo Switch Online service. So that's interesting. I'm not sure if it's a code you can just hold on to and keep for a while and then use it down the road when maybe there's something else you want to try out on the service before you buy it. But uh, I think it's really cool that uh, they're allowing that to happen during this, this trial period, obviously with the goal of getting people to buy Splatoon 2 and getting people to buy the service long haul. Uh, they're also offering a 20% discount of Splatoon 2 during this week if you play the demo on the eShop. So 20% off if you try out the demo. So it's actually a great time uh, if you're thinking about getting a digital copy of Splatoon 2 you haven't jumped in yet. It's going to be the cheapest it's ever been and you're going to be able to try it out for free with that, that, that week. And it's only $20 per year for the Nintendo Switch Online service. I know I'm not going to sit here and tell you the Nintendo Switch Online service is a great service and you should put put your money into it, but if you, you find yourself really loving Splatoon 2 and you have Smash and you've been kind of waiting to play that online, uh, maybe you're thinking about online in the future for games like, you know, Sword and Shield, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, to me, there's enough games that make me feel like I have to have the service, so uh, yeah, I have the service. I also have Xbox Live, primarily just to play games online, even though they actually have some cool features. Uh, games with Gold is actually really neat. Um, Nintendo has a, a similar thing, it's just for old games, so I don't know. As I talked about in a video earlier today, Nintendo has announced a Nindy showcase happening during GDC, not at GDC, but during GDC on Wednesday the 20th at 11 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, of course, because that's how I frame all the time frames for me. That being said, I think this is a really, really cool thing that's happening. It's going to be 30 minutes long. There's a lot of indie games probably going to be talked about. They kind of do one of these every fall and every spring is about the timing that we get these sort of Nindy showcases, Nindy Direct kind of things. So I think this is really cool, and I can't wait to see what they have in store. Hey, if anything else, we'll at least have a, a, a jam-packed, um, Prime News episode that's going to mention some of my favorite games from that Nindy Showcase on Wednesday. Probably not all of them, but I'll probably pick, you know, five or six of them to kind of briefly bring up as games that I think are look really, really cool and maybe you guys should pay attention to. So you guys remember a week or two ago when they kind of announced new stuff happening with Octopath Traveler, right? There's that mobile prequel game that has you let you play with like all eight characters at once, which is something you can't do in Octopath Traveler on Switch. And then they said there was a new Octopath Traveler game or something like that in development for consoles. And when I talked about it, a lot of people went to the comments and said, hey, remember, they didn't say this is for Switch, or they didn't say it was just for Switch. They didn't mention Switch at all. So don't be presumptuous, Nate, about a game that was exclusive to Switch in the first place. Well, it turns out that my presumptions were right. Uh, they, some representatives from the Octopath Traveler team did an interview with Famitsu Magazine, and according to every translation of it I have seen, they say directly in a question asked about Octopath Traveler on Switch, a new Octopath Traveler on Switch, they specifically say, yes, we are developing a new Octopath Traveler game for Nintendo Switch. Now, they did not say it's exclusive to Nintendo Switch, so you can still hold out hope if you're a PlayStation, Xbox, PC fan that it's going to branch out. But, Switch owners, rest assured that you are getting a brand new Octopath Traveler game on Switch sometime in the future. Now, let's address why I originally said I called it a sequel. Here's the thing. They're releasing a prequel on phones. There's the current game. What else is next? That's my logic. You can disagree with it. But uh, prequel, current, obviously the next one's a sequel. You're not going to do a prequel to the prequel, are you? That doesn't... It's either a prequel or a sequel. There's not really anything else. So, uh... Yeah. Bethesda has announced they are going to be at E3 again for the fifth year in a row, doing the Bethesda E3 Showcase on June 9th at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is exciting stuff. They specifically mentioned in the announcement they will be talking a lot about Doom Eternal. No surprise, Doom Eternal is supposed to land this year. Cross-platform and everything, including Switch, should be day and date on Switch, so that's exciting for Switch owners, even though we have to see how it performs. We're going to know at E3. I guarantee it'll be playable at E3, and I will try my best to go hands-on with that game and get you all the footage and impressions I can, uh, and maybe even try to go hands-on with a PlayStation 4 or Xbox version of it just to kind of give you that comparison of, okay, well, I played the Switch version. That's what that looks like. Here's what this one looks like, and let's talk about the differences there and, and how we feel about that for this current generation Doom game. 
That being said, there's going to be other games obviously talked about as well because I say more and more and more. And they have this this phrase this phrase they're using called "be together." Uh, I don't know if this is referencing Fallout 76. I really hope it's not referencing Fallout 76 or another massive multiplayer experience like that that just is a big letdown. But they do mention that they are going to allow more people than they've ever allowed in before to watch their show live, including fans, not just media. So uh, there is a potential I might be attending, but we'll see. Um, I think there might be more value uh, for me and for you guys if I just live stream react to the event rather than attend it. Uh, But if I find out there's some stuff that they're doing in person, I'm not talking about swag. I don't really care about the swag. But if there's like demos and stuff they're going to have available that you can play afterwards, um, then I obviously would want to attend uh, so I can get my hands on that stuff. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. Who knows? Maybe we'll uh, play our cards right and like one of me or Eric will go and the other one will stay behind and, and do the live stream. Maybe we'll do both. More is always better, right? So recently, a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate modder, well known for several different mods they have already done to the game to basically add additional characters, was digging through the files of the game and they discovered a file in the World of Light mode with 16 empty character slots. Or at least it was 16. It's more like 15 now because, well, one of those slots was filled by Piranha Plant when Piranha Plant released. This is interesting because it does suggest that there potentially is 15 more characters coming. Now we know one of them is Joker and we know there's some other DLC characters coming as well but there's no plans currently announced publicly after that so this does suggest we could see up to 10 additional characters beyond the currently announced dlc this does potentially give us a chance to see characters going on to next year and the year after in fact there is a potential here that we're looking at two or three years worth of different dlc packs with five characters each to me this is an extremely exciting proposition and uh it's going to keep smash hype going for years to come being that this game is called Smash Ultimate, it's probably the only reason I'm willing to give a little bit of credence to this file that was found because being called Super Smash Bros. Ultimate feels like you need a really, really long shelf life because it's hard to top the ultimate version of your game, right? I mean, there's always those ultimate definitive edition with uh, gold stars and you know platinum rating ones out there. But uh, let's just be honest, Nintendo usually doesn't do stuff like that. Then again, we got Kirby's... Delu- like Kirby's... Epic Yarn Ultra Deluxe Edition. I extra Epic Yarn, I believe. I mean, I who I guess who am I talking about? I mean, just a new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe as well. And okay, so Nintendo's doing those kind of things too. But Smash Bros. is a new game, so it's gonna be a while before stuff like that happens to Smash. So Takashi Izuka, the leader of the Sonic franchise at Sega, did announce over the weekend that there is going to be a new Sonic game. In fact, he specifically said. A new Sonic game is currently in development for the main series. That's right, the next big Sonic game, whatever it is, is in development. Now, the Sonic franchise has had its ups and downs with its mainline games. You know, some people really loved Colors back in the day. Then they didn't really like Sonic Adventures so much. Maybe you did like Sonic Adventures. I don't know what you like. Only you know what you like. Uh, Sonic Forces came out, and I thought Sonic Forces was actually pretty good, but some people didn't dig it. Uh, Then there's Sonic Boom. I think most people agree that Sonic Boom didn't feel like a Sonic game anyways, uh, let alone whether it's it's a good game or not, I guess, is up to the eye of the beholder. But I honestly think that Sonic has just kind of been all over the place. And then we saw things like, you know, that the the fan-made Sonic game that became official at Sega, and then that ended up becoming an official product, and it became one of the best Sonic games released, I I don't know, the last couple decades That's how long it's been since Sonic has consistently been great. So I'm very interested, as always, when a new Sonic game is in development. I'm not surprised. There's that Sonic the Hedgehog movie coming, which I know some people are uh, not too excited about. And uh, now there's a new Sonic game coming. We do have Sonic Team Racing coming as well. We got some new details on that as well over the weekend. Just some look at some cars and some different customizations, which I do think are really, really cool. But honestly, I'm just ready for the game to be here. I don't know that we need to know anything more about the game. It's kind of like Mario Kart. We don't really need to know more. Just get the game in our hands, uh, and that'll be here this summer. So, cool beans. Yes, I just said cool beans. When's the last time you heard someone say cool beans? I feel like I was like 12. I want to thank all of you guys for tuning into this episode of Prime News. 
I am loving what's happening in the world of Nintendo this week. Lots of cool stuff. Be sure to turn into that Google stream tomorrow. Go watch our 100th episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast and then enter the giveaway related to that. Don't forget about our ongoing giveaway for the Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Edition, especially if they're adding all those new DLC characters over the next few years. You might as well get that limited edition system that's going to cost you upwards of $450 to $500 to buy it on your own now because Nintendo never did a second run of that system. Nintendo, what are you doing? We all just want to have these special editions. We don't really care if they're limited. But uh, I guess for collectors, that's a good thing. All right, folks. I love your faces, and I'll see you in the next video. Or you'll actually see me in the next video. I mean, I don't actually see you. Or do I?